Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to dive into the world of Xtool Creative Space Engraving, specifically understanding the speed and the power settings on your engraver. Imagine creating intricate designs on metal, wood, or even glass with laser-like precision. Knowing how to adjust the speed and power is a crucial part for achieving beautiful and professional results whether you're just a beginner or an experienced engraver. Xtool Creative Space defines power like this. Laser power decides laser energy density and processing capability. The engraving depth varies with laser power levels. A high laser power with low speed can achieve cutting effects. This means that power determines the intensity of the laser beam. High power leads to deeper cuts while lower power settings can create more subtle marks. Then Creative Space defines speed like this. Speed at which the laser module moves across the material surface. The slower the speed, the longer the laser works on the material, resulting in a more pronounced processing effect. And this refers to how fast your laser module moves around your material. A slower speed generally produces a deeper, more intricate cut, while a faster speed results in a more shallow and delicate one. And you'll notice that the speed is notated in millimeters per second and the power is a percentage out of 100. These two things work together and understanding their interplay is crucial for achieving the desired engraving effects. So here are three simple steps on how to find the perfect engraving speed and power to use on different material types. To make this process a little bit more cleaner, idea number one is to use a test grid array before starting your engraving. So what exactly is a test grid array? Well, it's a quick way to test various combinations of speed and power settings on the same piece of material. By creating this grid, you can compare the results side by side making it super easy to find the sweet spot for your specific project. Here's how to do it. Open up a blank document and insert the image that you want to test. Select your image. On the left sidebar, go to the Applications tab and click Material Test Array. As you can see, it added multiple different circles onto this test array. You can change the maximum and minimum speed and powers on the X and the Y axis. As you can see, it starts out small at 10 millimeters per second, and then goes all the way up at 80 millimeters per second, 100% power. Once your grid is ready to run on your piece of material, it'll run the laser through each circle, adjusting the speed and power as it goes. And once it's done, you can evaluate the results you'll be able to see which setting works best for your material. Maybe it's the lower power with a higher speed and that gives you a cleaner cut. Or perhaps it's a higher power with slower speed that results in a better engraving detail. Here is an example of a grid array. Using a test grid array saves you time and material and it's the perfect way to dial in your settings before you start your main project. Idea number two is to use the material settings library that's included with Xtool Creative Space. You can get this by simply going up here to the top right where it says unknown material and clicking on it. As you can see, there's a bunch of different materials here added. Once you click one of these pieces of material, such as six millimeter basswood and click confirm, it'll make this power and the speed necessary to score a circle onto that piece of basswood. Same with engraving and with cutting. As you can see, the power increases with cutting and the speed decreases, and it gives four passes because it's a decently thick piece of basswood. You may also have another material that you don't see here on this front page, like cork. So here's a cork desk pad. Or here are three other cork recommendations. So let's use just a small 0.53 millimeter piece of cork. Here is an example of how this cork will look using the Xtool logo. 
using 30% power, 80 millimeters per second. It also gives you an idea of how it'll look after an engraving at 25% power, 200 millimeters per second, as well as cutting using 100% power, two millimeters per second and four passes. There's a lot of different material that you can use here and you can save these materials and use them for a later date. Another option is to use the xtool.com website. The easiest way to find this is to type in xtool material settings library and click on the first link. This is very similar to the library we just saw on xtool creative space. As you can see, you can pick your engraver type. I've got an Xtool D1, and then you can scroll down and see popular types of materials. Here's one three millimeter maple MDF board. So let's say I had this piece of material. I know I had the D1 Pro, it's a 10 watt engraver. I'm gonna process on a flat surface and I want to engrave it. I can use this template here and find which speed and power looks best for the type of engraving I want to do. So I want something pretty dark, not quite this dark. So I may want around 70% power and 110 millimeters per second to get the perfect engraving. So now I can add this to my Xtool Creative Space and make it a new document that I can then engrave. And there's a bunch of other ideas here of different engravings that you can do. It's just something you'll have to play around with a little bit. So there are three different ways that you can find the speed and power necessary for the type of engraving you want to do. You can try using the materials test array. You can use the materials guide given from Xtool Creative Space. And then you can even try to use Xtool Materials Setting Library. These are three great options. And no matter which one you use, be sure to practice on a scrap piece of material before you go to your final engraving. It doesn't hurt whenever you buy a piece of material to engrave to go ahead and buy two. That way you can practice on your first one and then use your second one. I have coasters, tumblers, glass cups, and leather patches that I practice on quite a bit because I always want to have extra just in case I accidentally mess up. So I hope you found some benefit from this video. If you have some other ideas on how to find the perfect speed and power, please leave them down in the comments. If you don't mind, please like and subscribe and leave some comments and I'll try to get to them as quick as I can. And also check out my channel for some other great Xtool and Xtool Creative Space videos. Have a great one.